Well, good evening. Let's start tonight with a word of prayer. Father, we are thankful uh, that we can gather. We're thankful for uh, a warm place to uh, meet and worship and to lift up our prayer request before you. We're thankful for your faithfulness uh, to us and uh, to this church. And uh, we're grateful for the way that you meet our needs. We pray that as we meet together tonight, we would honor you and lift you up as we meet together. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to start off with hymn number 56, Day by Day. <clears throat> This is the first time in many months that I haven't had cough drops in my mouth when I started the service, so we'll see if I can make it without coughing. <clears throat> Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, Gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure. Tingling toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me. With a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As your days your strength shall be in measure. This a pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust your promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith's sweet consolation. Offered me within your holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meet it. Bear to take as from a father's hand. One by one, the days a moment fleeting. Till I reach the promised land. And back in Ezekiel tonight, Ezekiel chapter 25. But Ezekiel 24, we finished up the judgment that was announced for Judah, for Jerusalem. And in Ezekiel 25, we start getting into the judgment of the nations. And uh, so as we look at chapter 25, uh, our main idea tonight is, it, is that for those who trust God, we need to respond to evil in our own lives with hope and grace to others experiencing evil in their lives. And we're going to see how that fits in, make that a little bit more understandable. Uh, title tonight, What to Know When Evil Comes. And it's interesting, as we did Psalm 37 on Sunday night, Psalm 37 starts off, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Uh, that it was, don't fret, don't worry about those that do evil. And here, as Israel is in captivity, as Judah is in captivity, as Ezekiel is in Babylon, announcing God's judgment to Jerusalem and to Judah, the nations around Israel were attacking Israel, whether verbally, whether uh, in war, they were attacking Israel. And for those in Judah, it could feel like 
as God was judging them that the nations were getting their kicks out of Judah's downfall. And so what do we do when evil comes, uh, what, when there's something bad going on in our lives and we feel like the wicked are winning, when we feel like God's not really hearing his people, uh, we need to respond with hope. And, and we're going to see that as we look at chapter 25. But also we can see in chapter 25, for those that piled on to Judah when they were getting judged, there was a problem for those piling on. Judgment wasn't theirs to do. And the picture that we have of the nations around Judah piling on to Judah when they were being judged is the picture of uh, one child, whether it be in a home or whether it be in a classroom, when the parent or teacher calls out the bad behavior of one child or student and another child or student starts piling on and starts trying to be the parent or try, tries to start being the teacher that they kind of get put in their place as well. That these nations that were speaking out against Judah, that were treating Judah poorly, God was going to judge them for what they did. What's interesting as we look at these nations, here in chapter 25 we have the Ammonites, Moab and Seir, uh, we have Edom, and we have the Philistines. Between chapters 25 and 32, we're going to end up with the judgment announced against Egypt and uh, several other nations. The interesting thing is, Judah is in captivity in Babylon. And Babylon is not mentioned. Babylon is not due for judgment in this passage. Because Babylon was being used by God for this judgment. In other passages, though, we will read in Scripture that the, the nation God used to judge his people would come under judgment for what they had done to God's people, even though God had used them in that. So the main idea, for those who trust in God, we need to respond to evil in our own lives with hope, not getting down about the wicked prospering in their way. And we need to give grace to those that are experiencing evil in their lives. And, and this kind of is the fleshing out of Psalm 37. Fret not because of evildoers. Chapter 25, verse 1, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidest, Aha! against my sanctuary when it was profaned, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee, and they shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. And so uh, there's more to the judgment there, but as we start into the judgment, how do we respond when evil comes? There is comfort here for those that are experiencing evil, and there's a warning for those that are seeing others going through evil. The comfort and the warning has to do with the fact that we should not laugh at the misfortune of others. The warning, don't laugh at the misfortune of others. The Ammonites had said, aha. They had said, well, Judah finally got what's coming to them. Look at how bad things are going for them. Now, why shouldn't we do that when we see someone going through a hard time that we believe is in the wrong? Maybe it's a nation. Maybe it's, uh, I remember at, at, at certain times in, in our nation's past, even in the past 20 years, when pastors came out and said sin was the reason that something bad happened to a part of our nation. Back in uh, when we had the big uh, flooding up the East Coast, they said, ah, what God is doing is he's judging Wall Street because New York City had some massive flooding. God's judging Wall Street. And when Katrina happened, God's judging New Orleans for their sinfulness. And when another natural disaster happened, God's judging this or God's judging that. Well, why can't we say that? We can't say that because if God was going to send a natural disaster everywhere there was sin, 
we'd have an awful lot of natural disasters. And if we were to say, well, Wall Street, because of their greed, is suffering. I don't know that the greed on Wall Street is any greater than the greed on Main Street in most of the towns and cities across our nation. I don't know that the sin of New Orleans, although on display at different times of the year, is any more severe than the sin that takes place on city streets and in, in, in people's houses. And because of the devices and access to all sorts of evil that we have at our command, it's no worse than what happens anywhere else in our nation. On top of that, since we're not God, we can't jump on and say, this is for sin. We're not God. So there's a caution here. When we see people going through evil, to laugh at the, not to laugh at the misfortune of others. When we're going through evil and others are laughing at us, there's comfort. And that comfort is that God sees, God understands, God knows, and God will take care of it. The Ammonites laughed at Judah. And God says, I'm going to deliver you as a possession to the men of the east. Verse 5, and I will make Rabbah a stable for camels. Uh, Rabbah would have been a, a center of population, not a place for feeding camels. And the Ammonites, a couching place for flocks. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast clapped thine hands and stamped with thy feet and rejoiced in heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel. Behold, therefore, I will stretch out my hand upon thee and I will deliver thee for a spoil to the heathen and I will cut thee off from the people and I will cause thee to perish out of the countries. I will destroy thee and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So when we see others going through difficulty or others that are that have evil in their lives, we need to guard against clapping with our hands, rejoicing in our hearts, laughing at the calamity that comes because we don't know what God is doing. Because we are not the judge. The comfort is God will judge. The warning is, God will judge. And with God as judge, we don't want to be the one stepping in the way of God's judgment and getting it, uh, getting the uh, target moved to us. Laughing at the misfortune of others. We, there's a warning there against that and a comfort when that happens to us. Verse 8, thus saith the Lord God, because at Moab and Seir. Now, the Ammonites... Anyone know where the Ammonites came from? Ammon. That's how you said Ammon. Uh-huh. And who's Ammon? Lot's son with his daughter. The Ammonites. We have uh, Moabites in there. We have Mount Seir. And uh, we have some of those these are all relatives of the Israelites. Uh, and they laughed at the misfortune. Kind of as Abraham was the favorite child and Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes of Israel were the favorite. When the favorite fell, the rest of the family kind of piled on. Uh, verse 8, Moab and Seir say, Behold, Judah is like all unto all the heathen. Moab and Seir were saying, Judah is no better than the unsaved, the unchosen, unchosen, the non-chosen, the, what's the opposite of chosen? The ignored. <laughs> They're like the heathen. The comfort and warning here is for those that judge the salvation of others. In churches sometimes, it comes across well, you're going through a difficult time. Maybe you need to check your heart with the Lord. That's not our point to say. But sometimes people will say that. There's a comfort here when people say that because God knows the heart. Now, obviously, it's okay for us to check and see and search our hearts if there's something going on in our life to see if God is working, to see if God is trying to bring correction. 
but we certainly ought not to judge others their salvation based on what they're going through. Well, because some people will say things like, well, if you had more faith, you wouldn't be going through this struggle. Well, that's what Moab and Seir were doing. Well, you guys are just like the heathen. God's chosen people, right? You're just like the heathen. There's a comfort here when we hear that. And there's a warning here against declaring that to others. Therefore, behold, verse 9, I open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jesh Shemoth, Baal Meon, and Kiriath Thaim. No idea. But what I said sounds something like the letters that are there. Unto the men of the east with the Ammonites, and I will give them in possession, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. And I will execute judgment upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. A caution, a warning against those that would judge the salvation of others, and a comfort for those who feel judged by others for their salvation. God will judge. If we are right before the Lord, and if we are looking to him, we don't need to worry about people judging us. We need to make sure that we are right before God. And when we see others struggling, we have no right to say, well, must be they're not saved. That's God's job, not our job. Verse 12, thus saith the Lord, because at Edom hath dealt with the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Edom, of course, comes from Esau. That's his nation against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended. They took vengeance. Why did they take vengeance? Because they saw a weak in Judah. How could they take vengeance? Because God was judging Judah. Edom could never have come against Judah if God was on their side and God was supporting them. Because they would come against and God would protect his people. But as God was judging his people and carrying them off captive, Edom kind of kicked them while they were down. Now, the comfort, if we feel kicked when we're down, the comfort side of this is, again, the comfort and the warning are both the same for all of these cases. The comfort is God will judge. If you feel kicked while you're down, don't worry, God will judge the kicker. If you're choosing to kick others when they're down, the warning is, God will judge. You don't want to kick others while they're down. Sometimes in Christianity that happens, that people kick others while they're down. And uh, you say, well, why would they do that? Because sometimes even in Christianity, Christians get the idea that this is some type of competition to see who's the best. Uh, God is. God's the best. The rest of us are in a race that we're all trying to get to the finish line together. It's not a matter of I finished before you. It's not first grade walking back to their classroom and it's my turn to walk into the classroom first. This is a race where we're all trying to get there together, supporting one another. We don't kick each other when we're down. For Edom, they were taking vengeance. God's answer, verse 13, therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it and I will make it desolate from Taman and they of Dadan shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do to an Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. The comfort, God will judge. And actually God says in this case, he will use Israel to judge Edom. The Philistines decided to do the same thing as Edom, Thus saith the Lord God, verse 15, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred, the hatred between the Philistines and the Israelites. Again, they were kicking Israel while they were down because for the Philistines, they couldn't come across God's people when God's people were walking with God because God defended them. Remember the Philistines stole the Ark of the, uh, of the Covenant. How well did that work out for the Philistines? 
Well, God sent all sorts of problems to the Philistines, and they finally decided to send the Ark of the Covenant back by itself, and it went up to Jerusalem. And they saved themselves from the trouble they were having. They couldn't lift their hand against God's people without God attacking them. But in this case, God was judging his people, and the Philistines took their revenge. They kicked Ju Judah while they were down. And again, the comfort and the warning is God will judge. Verse 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out mine hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off the cherethemes, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. If we want to summarize and take it out of the hands of, of, of not just laughing at the misfortune of others, judging the salvation of others, or kicking people while they're down, the comfort to us is when the evil are prospering, they're not God, God is. And God will take care of it. The warning to us when we are tempted to do these things is we're not God. Well, why would we ever try to step into God's place? For the same reason we like to take any authority we can get sometimes, is there are times when we feel like God isn't doing his job right. Now, we wouldn't say that out loud. We just kind of live our lives that way sometimes. God isn't doing his job right. So uh, I might get upset over some way that I'm treated. Well, why would I get upset over some way that I'm treated? Because I don't think God's doing his job right. Why would I want to defend myself where God says to trust in the Lord and he will defend me? Well, I don't feel like God's doing his job right. When do I feel like lashing out at the wicked because they're prospering in their way? Because I don't feel like God's doing his job right, and I think God should judge them quicker. The comfort is God is God, and he will take care of it. The warning is don't try to play God, and there's a lot of ways that that comes into to play, but especially here in Ezekiel 25, what to do when evil comes. When it comes in our lives, there's great comfort because God will take care of it. When evil comes in others' lives, there's a word of caution to be careful how we respond to them because we're not God and God will judge and God will straighten it out. In the meantime, we can continue to, to uh, pray and know that God hears and God responds and God takes care of that. And with that, we will transition over to our time of prayer and praise tonight and we'll go offline for that.